If you'd like to attend the next Mad Thing in a Masjid event, inshallah ta'ala, live in a masjid, then click on the link below. It will take you to a Telegram group that has the details for all the events that we do, inshallah. And you can then find the details for the next Mad Thing in a Masjid, which will be on a Saturday, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers the poster today is titled level up and what is it that we leveling up inshallah ta'ala we hope to level up is our blessings from Allah a person's life has either blessings or it has calamities. Your life is either blessings or it is calamities. Right? Who wants more calamities? Anyone want more problems in life? We don't want problems in life. What do we want? We want more blessings. Right? Today we're going to learn how to increase our blessings. Not just how to increase a blessing, but when you get a blessing, how do you ensure that the blessing remains? Because today you've got health, tomorrow you get cancer, right? Today you're rich, tomorrow you're poor. No, you want to remain rich, you want to remain healthy, right? And the greatest blessing, which is the blessing of Iman, today you're upon your deed and you want to stay upon your deed. You don't want to fall off, right? How people fall off? So my brothers, today is about blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ تَأَذْنَ Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَإِذْ تَأَذْنَ رَبَّكُمْ وَإِذْ تَأَذْنَ رَبُّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and when your Lord made an announcement, تَأَذْنَ, you know the adhan? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, it's a, it's a big announcement, right? وَإِذْ تَأَذْنَ رَبُّكُمْ When your Lord made an announcement, what was his announcement? He said, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ if you are grateful, if you are grateful, what's he going to do? Allah said, I'm going to increase you. So the announcement that Allah made, the proclamation was that if you show gratitude to Allah for the blessing he gave you, he's going to do what? He's going to increase you. Okay, let's break the ayah down. Some of us are like, listen, I'm trying to show gratitude, but I don't know if I'm going to be increased. Some people think maybe these guys are going to be increased, but I'm not going to be increased. Allah, is he lying? Is Allah going to lie? Never. Who is more truthful than Allah when it comes to speech? Allah said, sidqan. Allah's word is completed in truth. If you're grateful, Allah is going to increase you. He's going to increase you. And in case you maybe felt a little bit of, I need, you know, you want that extra confidence. Allah, he took an oath. Why do you, why do, why do you request people to take oaths? If you say, Akhi, say Wallahi, why, why, why do we do that? Why would you do that? When you don't, when you don't believe the person, right? If you did something and I don't believe you, I'm going to say, say Wallahi. And you're going to say, Wallahi, I'm not lying. Allah Azza wa Jal is already truthful. So why would he take an oath? It's not to prove that he's telling the truth. He's taking an oath to give you further emphasis that this, what he's saying, is definitely going to happen. And what is it? That he's going to increase you in your blessing if you're grateful. So then Allah said, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ The lam here is qasam. It's an oath. The lam shows an oath. So it's like Allah saying, Wallahi, if you are grateful. Wallahi, if you're grateful. I'm going to give you more. And he didn't just say, I'm going to give you more. He said, la, la, he said la azidannakum. The noon here, it shows in the Arabic language emphasis, more. It's called noon at tawkid So it's like Allah is not just saying, I'm going to give you. He's saying, I'm going to give you. Certainly, I'm going to give you. Definitely, I'm going to give you. I'm absolutely going to give you. <coughs> so then the meaning that we can extract from the ayah is when Allah said, la in shakartum. If you are grateful, I eat wallahi, if they are grateful. So the meaning you get, Allah said, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ Wallahi, if they are grateful. Allah is saying, if they are grateful, and He took an oath. 
لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ سَاتَنْلِي 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 I am gonna give them more. Did he tell you how much he's gonna give you? Did he say I'm gonna give them double? Did he say I'm gonna give them triple? He said I'm gonna give them. And he didn't mention an amount. Which means that for one time you're grateful to Allah, Allah can increase you and increase you and increase you without counting. So then does it not make sense to be grateful to your Lord? Does it not make sense to show gratitude to Allah for what He gave you? Huh? Does it make sense? It makes very much, it makes a lot of sense, right? But the opposite is true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala in kafartum. But if you are ungrateful. And what? He used the lamb again to show qasm. Wala in kafartum. Wallahi, if they're ungrateful. Allah said, Wallahi, if they are ungrateful though. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in adabi certainly my punishment is severe certainly my punishment is severe so which school do you want to go to the school of shukr where your blessings multiply or the school of ingratitude where you then receive punishment for what? For not for not acknowledging the blessings Allah gave you. Some people are gonna say, wait, 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 wait. But I know some people that are not grateful to Allah, yet they keep getting more blessings. Yes or no? Put your hand up if you've seen this. A guy he don't pray. Rather he sleeps around with girls, he listens to music, he might even make music, he might even sell drugs. But he gets more. You're trying to find one sister to marry in a halal way, but he's sleeping with a new woman every night. You're trying to find one job so you can make some halal money. And this guy's making peas, doing fraud, selling drugs. Do you understand? So how is that the case? That a guy who's disobeying Allah is getting more. How do you understand this? You see, being given a blessing can be a punishment. As well as being given a blessing can be a reward. Being given a blessing can be a punishment and reward. If you're grateful, the blessing will come as a reward. If you're ungrateful, the blessing will still come, but it's a punishment. That's what Allah said. Allah said, I'm going to take them to their destruction slowly. And I'm going to bring their destruction to them from a place that they could not imagine. They are not going to see it coming. What does this mean? The Salaf, they mentioned that when a person disobeys Allah, every time he does a sin, Allah gives him a blessing. Every time he disobeys, Allah will give him a blessing. He does a good deed, Allah will give him a blessing as a reward. He does a bad deed, Allah will give him a blessing. But this blessing is for what reason? This blessing is to drown him deeper in his negligence from Allah. And at the same time, when he gives him the blessing, he will take away from him the ability to show gratitude. Like Allah said, the ones who, what? They turned away from Allah's ayat. They turned away from the ayat of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah said, فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah is going to open for them the doors of success. Until they become so happy and excited with the things that Allah has given them. Allah said, I'm going to snatch them quickly. Baghtatan, suddenly I'm going to destroy them. So a person may be given a blessing even though he's doing sins. But this blessing is a punishment. Not a reward. This blessing is a punishment and not a not a reward. So it doesn't mean that just because you see a guy having blessings, the formula is wrong. No, he's got the blessing. But Allah's going to destroy him through that blessing. It's going to be further away from Allah because of that blessing. He's going to get so many girls, he's going to forget about Allah. So much money, he's going to get lost in the dunya. But you see, when a slave is grateful for what Allah has given him, Allah will give him and give him and give him more. Does that make sense? Okay, pay attention. If Allah is going to increase your blessing, that also means that the blessing is going to remain. How many times do blessings come but then they 
they disappear. Yes or no? How many times the blessings come, but then they disappear? Sometimes Allah gives you something. It's an opportunity for you to be grateful. You weren't grateful, He takes it away from you. He gave you safety, now you're in a state of fear. He gave you health, now you're sick. He gave you riches, now you're poor. When a person is grateful, two things happen. Two things happen. Number one, the blessing that you didn't have is going to come your way. Because Allah is going to increase you, right? And number two, the one that you already have will remain and it will stay, inshallah ta'ala. Does that make sense? Okay, good. What is one of the ways that people show ingratitude to Allah? They don't even acknowledge the blessing Allah gave them in the first place. This is one of the greatest ways that people show to Allah Azza wa Jalla that they are ungrateful, that they are ingrates. They don't even acknowledge the blessing that Allah gave. Allah Azza wa Jalla said in the Quran, and this ayah of Allah is truly amazing. He said, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ Allah said, and we gave to them every single thing they asked for. From everything you asked, Allah gave to you. <clears throat> Allah gave you things that you didn't even ask for from your lips, but your situation asked for it. Who's ever been in a situation where you're stuck and you didn't even make dua, but the problem got solved? Yes or no? Put your hand up. That was Allah responding to your situation. Your situation was asking. You know how to say actions speak louder than words? Right? You're asking, Allah help me. Sometimes you don't ask because you're too arrogant to ask. Sometimes you don't ask because you forgot Allah, you forgot to ask. But Allah didn't forget, He saw your situation. Your situation was asking, so He helped you. In fact, you will find that more times Allah helped you when you didn't even ask. Right? Every day we're going through problems. And Allah is constantly helping you, taking the problem away. And you don't even ask it. Imagine you actually asked. وَأَتَكُمْ It came to you مِنْ كُلِّ From every single thing you ask myself to all. How sad is it now? That a brother does what? He doesn't even acknowledge the blessing. And then Allah says وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا تُحْسُوهَا And if you were to try and count the blessings Allah has given you, you wouldn't be able to count them all. Have you ever tried this? Have you ever tried? Who's ever tried to count the blessings? Who's ever just sat there and said, let me just go through the blessings I have. Who's ever tried to do that? Who's ever tried to do that? So one, two, three, four, five, six people? Is that not a bit sad, brothers? Because Allah is actually telling you to do it. He's, as in, as in, as in he's, he's telling you you won't be able to do it. So how would you know you don't know, you're not able to do it if you never tried? Let's try it right now. Allah bless you with what? Eyes. Can eyes function without light? Suddenly so you have the blessing of light. Light comes from where? The sun. So then we have the blessing of the sun. Because of the sun, what do we have? Because of the sun, we have lots of things. Through the sun, Allah gives us lots. Photosynthesis, which is how pl plants work. They get sustenance. And if Allah, if the sun, if, if, if Allah didn't feed the plants through the sunlight, the plants wouldn't grow. You wouldn't be able to have vegetables. The animals wouldn't be able to eat those plants, which means you wouldn't have meat. That through the sun, Allah brings down rain. Through the rain, you drink. Through the rain, you clean. And then, subhanAllah, there's the blessing of being clean. You know, Queen Elizabeth, the first, you know, she used to have a bath once a month. That was the queen of this country. And she was booed. You know why she was booed? Because the nits yammed up her hair. <laughs> and her teeth were dirty yellow. Because she never brushed her teeth. And that was the queen of England. Yet Bedouins in the desert at the time of the Prophet have got sparkling teeth, full fresh hair, lombardic, having a ghusl every Friday minimum. And if he's married, he's doing it every night. And if he's got four wives and he's able to go to all of them every day, he does it, he goes to ghusls four times a night. <laughs> the savage beastly brothers, huh? <laughs> and it's not a bad thing. You know the Prophet ﷺ, one time he went to his wives, all nine of them in one day, and he done a ghusl between each one. Telling me the Prophet wasn't a real man. The Prophet was the realest man. He could go to all of his nine wives. Do you understand? So the point we're making, brothers, is that look at the blessing of what? Cleanliness. This kuffar, they don't clean their bums properly. When COVID happened, what do they say? They say what? The way to solve COVID is stop. Stop walking out of the toilet without washing your hands. 
They had, COVID had to happen for them to know, bruv, clean the pee on your hands, bro. <laughs> Look at the blessings from Allah. And we can carry on. And do you see how we started off with my eyes and we ended up with what? We ended up with the sun. And like when you mention the blessings Allah gave you, brother, it don't stop. It don't stop. And how sad is it when Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Inna insana li rabbihi la kanood. But the human to Allah is kanood. What does it mean, kanood? What does it mean he's kanood to Allah? Hassan al Basri said, It's that he counts the problems in his life, he doesn't count the blessings. When I ask you all here right now, who counted blessings in their life? Six people put their hand up in a room with almost 100 people. But if I ask you right now, who's counted their problems before? Put your hand up right now. Ah, oh, all of us. Wait, I'm, I'm broke, I don't have a job, I don't have a wife. We talk, we talk about our problems all day. As for our blessings, Allah said, But the blessings of your Lord, talk about them, Allah said. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me a wife. Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me a child. Alhamdulillah, I'm alive. Alhamdulillah, Allah made me Muslim. Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal gave us heating and our brothers and sisters in Syria don't even have blankets in this freezing cold winter. Huh? We talk about our problems. That's ingratitude. Allah gave you blessings more than you can count. But you forget about them. You forget about the mountain of blessings. But you focus on the three or four problems. Count right now the problems in your life, in your mind. Count, 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 count the problems that you have. I promise you're not going to get past ten. Furthermore, I promise you're going to struggle to go past five problems. In your mind right now, count the problems. Do it, do it. It's, a four, it's an exercise. Count the problems that you have in your life. How many have you got? Four. Allah, I'm bad. By the way, what are, how old are you? Ten. I really want to know what your problems are. Go ahead. <laughs> go on, go on, share it with me. Yeah, just the four that you counted. Share that like one or two of them. If you don't mind. You're single, is that one? <laughs> Not enough chocolate in the fridge. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. We'll talk about it privately after, inshallah. <laughs> but you understand, brothers? This is ingratitude to Allah. Okay, now let me ask you a question. The blessings that Allah gave you, did you do anything to deserve them? Allah gave you a heart. Did you earn it? So why did he give it to you? Look at his mercy. Look at his generosity. And all he told you is pray five times a day in return and fast in Ramadan. Is that a lot? Did you do anything to deserve your lungs? But Allah gave them to you. Okay, let me ask you a question. How much are your lungs worth? If I said to you right now, I'm going to pay you a billion pounds for both your lungs, are you going to give them to me? I tell you, I give you 10 billion pounds for your heart, are you going to give it to me? I tell you, I give you 1 trillion pounds for your brain, will you give it to me? So there's, is, there's no value on the blessings Allah gave you. Not only can you not count them, but you can't even value them. They're what? You cannot value them, they're invaluable. They are uncountable and they're invaluable. And you didn't do anything to deserve it. In fact, he gave you those blessings and you didn't even ask. And then when you asked, he gave you. On top of that as well. Look at this statement by Imam Ibn Qayyim. And I want you to focus on it so you understand it. He said, Subhana man lam yaj'al li ahadi ma'rifati ni'amihi illa bil'ilmi bit-taqseeri an ma'rifatiha. He said, glory be to the one. Glory be to the one who made the way you get to understand his blessings, that the way you get to know how his blessings are, how big his blessings are, is by understanding that you will never be able to understand his blessings in the first place. In other words, if you have understood that what Allah gave you is too much to count, then that means you have understood that Allah blessed you. The guy who doesn't even realize Allah gave him so much, will not even understand that. So he's ungrateful. The guy who doesn't even understand that what Allah gave him is a lot. He's ungrateful. But the guy who understands what Allah gave me is so much, I can't even count it. Now he is grateful. And they say, glory be to Allah, that he made 
your acknowledgement of not understanding how great is blessing a means of you being grateful for that blessing in the first place when you say Allah what you gave me is more than I can count you've just been grateful when you say Allah what you gave me I can't, I can't even I can't even encompass all that you've given me now you have just been you've just been grateful the way Allah made it what the way to show that you're grateful for his blessings is how is how the fact that you've acknowledged that Allah gave you more than you can even understand. Then look what Allah said after that. In the kafar. In the insana, kafar. But the human being is ungrateful. Allah said, I gave you everything that you asked for. I gave you more than what you can ask for. You never deserved it in the first place. And if you try to count it, you won't be able to count it. But still you're not going to appreciate. After that, you're still going to be ungrateful. Ajib. Ajib, how's a person miss all that? So brothers, don't be like these people. Okay, now I'm going to ask you another question. When Allah gives you a blessing and you say Alhamdulillah, Imam Ashafi said saying Alhamdulillah is in within itself a blessing. Allah gave you a wife. And if you say Alhamdulillah, the wife is a blessing, the fact that you thanked Allah for the blessing is a blessing. Because thanking Allah for the blessing brings you a, brings you a, another blessing. You guys get me, yeah? Okay, good. So then the scholars had a discussion. What's the greater blessing? The fact that Allah gave you a wife? The fact that He gave you a car? The fact that He gave you clothes? Or the fact that you were able to say Alhamdulillah to that. What's the bigger one? The blessing that he gave you? Or the blessing of being able to say Alhamdulillah? Let's, let's, have, a, let's have a discussion. Who, who thinks that is the blessing that he gave you? The second one is more you think the second one is more? So you say that the fact that you can say Alhamdulillah is a greater blessing than the wife that he gave you? Okay, okay, good. So anyone disagree with him? Does anyone disagree with him? What do you think? You think he's right? What do you guys think? Seems right. Huh? Sufyan ibn Uyayna said, nice. He said, if you say that saying Alhamdulillah is a greater blessing than what Allah gave you, you're saying the action of the slave is greater than the action of the Lord. Because you said Alhamdulillah, but Allah gave you the wife. You said Alhamdulillah, but Allah gave you the heart. You said Alhamdulillah, but Allah gave you the... He gave you the what? He gave you the what? Car. Is that deep? Ibn Rajab responded back. He said, nah, Sufyan, you're wrong. Saying Alhamdulillah is the greater blessing. You know why? He said, because what Allah gave you was the dunya. But when he gave you the ability to say Alhamdulillah, that was the deen. And the blessings of the deen are greater than the blessings of what? The dunya. Abu Ali used to say, I don't know what to be more grateful to Allah. The fact that he guided me to Al-Islam. Or that he guided me to the Prophet Sunnah and saved me from Bid'ah. What's more? As in these are the greatest blessings. Not just that, he said, on top of that, when Allah gives you blessings of the deen, sometimes those blessings are a punishment. Sometimes they're a reward. But when Allah gives you a blessing in your, sorry, in the dunya, if Allah gives you a blessing in the dunya, sometimes that blessing is a punishment, sometimes a reward. But if Allah gives you a blessing in the deen, then the blessing in the deen is always a reward. It's always khair. If Allah, if you had the ability to pray salah today, that was a reward. That's why the scholars mention, for example, some people can't pray at night, right? They can't pray tajud. This is because of your sins in the day. You didn't get the ability to pray the night prayer because you sinned in the day. If you stood in disobedience in the day, how can you expect to stand in obedience at night? So the only ones who pray the prayer at night are the ones who stand in obedience at the day and then they are rewarded by Allah. Allah, He wakes them up at night and says, come and stand and talk to me. 
My question is how many of us have shown Allah gratitude for the fact that Allah guided us to Islam? You wake up as a Muslim and there are those that wake up as kuffar. Have you once said, Allah, all praise and thanks is to you, you made me a Muslim. All praise and thanks is to you, I prayed today. All praise and thanks is to you, I read the Quran today. Some of us are like, I'm not growing in my Iman. I'm not growing in my Iman. Are you being grateful for the Iman you already have? If you are grateful for the Iman you already have, Allah will give you more Iman. The Salaf will say, if you find your blessing is not growing, you are not being grateful. If you are grateful, the blessing has to grow. What did Allah say? لا إنشكرتم لا زيدنكم Wallahi, if they're grateful, certainly, certainly, I will increase them so much. So if the blessing is not coming because the gratitude is not there, brothers, it's because the gratitude is not there. Do you understand? So you must... Be great. You must be grateful for this. Because then Allah, because often Allah will take it away. How many brothers come to the deen but then they stop practicing? Who's seen it? Brothers who come to the deen but then they fall off. Right? It's very scary. They fell off because they weren't grateful for the deen that Allah gave them. They weren't grateful for the iman Allah gave them. So Allah took the iman away. He made them fall. That's what Ibn Baz said. If, if a person falls off his deen, he was either not grateful for the iman Allah gave him or he looked down at someone who was not practicing his deen properly. If the person fell off his deen, it's because either he wasn't grateful for the iman Allah gave him or he looked at others who were not practicing. I look at this sinner, it's going to go hell. He had that kind of attitude. Very dangerous. So then my brothers, this begs a very important question now. This begs a... Very important question. The question is, how do you show gratitude? How do you do shukr to Allah? And I'm going to answer this question for you today. But I'm only going to answer it if each and every single one of you write it down. Whether you write it in your phone, whether you write it on paper. If you don't have a phone, you don't have paper, someone give it, someone share it. Because this brother is what I'm going to give you today. Is gold. In fact, it's more valuable than gold. So you tell me when you're not ready. Who's got their pen, paper, or phone out? Whoever has it out, you can talk. Are we all ready? Yes? You right? I'm going to mention them quickly, and then I'm going to go through each one in detail. If you don't do, the, it's four things. If you don't do these four things, you're not grateful. If you do three and miss one, you're ungrateful. You have to do all four. Yes? The first thing is you have to acknowledge the blessing. A person who doesn't even realize he's blessed, can he be grateful? You have to first realize it's the blessing, I'm blessed. Right? The second thing is you have to acknowledge the mun'im, the one who gave you the blessing. Who gave you the blessing? Allah. If Allah gives you the blessing, but you say, thank you, Sadi. Some kafir go on the street. Then have you been grateful to Allah? You acknowledge the blessing, but you gave the, you gave the blessing to who? The wrong person. Or you attribute it to the wrong person. Okay, the third thing is that sometimes Allah gives you a blessing, but He makes a human deliver it to you. He makes a human deliver it to you. For example, you need a job and a brother says, Ak, I've got a job for you. Allah brought you the job, but He brought it through the human. Allah gave you life, yes? But He gave it to you through your parents. So then the third thing is you have to be grateful to the one Allah used to bring you the blessing. This is why the parents, you have to respect them so much. Because they gave you life. Rather, Allah gave you life, sorry, but through them. Through them, right? The fourth thing is what? The blessing that he gave you now, that you've number one acknowledged, and you've attributed to him, and you've thanked the one Allah used to bring it to you. The fourth thing is now you have to use that blessing in the obedience of Allah. You have to use that blessing to 
Obey Allah. Allah give you eyes. Are you, are you grateful? Not until you use it for Allah's sake. A person who says, Allah give me eyes, but then he watches porn. He's not grateful. A person says, Allah give me eyes, but then he watches the women. He's not grateful. A person who says, Allah give me ears, but then he listens to music. He's not grateful. A person says, Allah give me a tongue, but then he uses it to backbite. He's not grateful. Until he uses the blessing for good. The eyes to reflect over the creation of Allah. The ears to listen to the Quran. The tongue to do zikr. The fourth, do you understand? These are the four things. Okay, let's go through each one in detail. The first one we said is what? If you've written it, that's the main thing. If you want to take more notes, you can. But if you want to just listen now, you can listen. If you've got those four points, that's what I wanted from you. Okay? That's what I wanted from you. Let's go through each one in detail now. The first one is what? That you have to acknowledge Allah gave this to you. Allah said, يَعْرِفُونَ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ يُنْكِرُونَهَا They acknowledge the blessing from Allah, but then they disbelieve in it. How? By saying, someone else did this for me. For example, sometimes you're in a car and your friend's driving you. And you're like, bro, you got to say quickly. You just disbelieved in Allah's blessing. He didn't get you anywhere. He didn't get you anywhere. He said, oh, you got to say safely. He didn't get you safely anywhere. He could have drived as carefully as he want. Allah could have brought a lorry to come and run in on the side of you. And you would have all been dead. Allah is the one who orchestrated the whole journey for you to arrive there safely. Does that make sense? So the first thing is you acknowledge the blessing. There's a blessing for me. Allah, you gave me this. Don't be like the ones who don't even understand the blessing in the first place. Who are always talking about my problems, my problems, my problems, my problems, my problems. No, talk about the blessings, acknowledge the blessing. Number two, give the blessing, acknowledge it and attribute it to Allah. If you tell me, if a person is on a ship and the wind is strong and it helps them get to their destination faster, if he says, the wind got to say fast, he doesn't mind his shirk. It's a type of shirk, the type of disbelief in Allah. It doesn't take you outside of Islam if you've said it accidentally, but it is still minor shirk. And minor shirk is worse than major sins. Does that make sense? Allah got to say safely. Does that make sense? Okay, then the... Th yes. Did somebody help us? I'm coming to that now. So then the, then the third thing is what? Allah will use someone to bring it to you, right? So we said you have to show gratitude to them as well. The evidence for that is that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever doesn't thank the people has not thanked Allah. There's not a contradiction here. You say, Alhamdulillah for Allah who gave me life through you, mum and dad. Alhamdulillah for this job that Allah gave me and he made you the one who brought it to me. Alhamdulillah for Allah who gave me this wife. And then you say to her father, you know, you married her off to me after. You say, all praise and thanks to Allah first, and then I want to thank you after. So you thank the human. If you don't thank the human, you're not being grateful. You have to thank the human too. But you have to understand the human was a means that came after Allah. And Allah used the human to get the blessing to you. Not the other way around. Do you guys understand? The fourth one. You have to use the blessing in, in what? In obedience. You have to use the blessing in good. This is the one I want to talk about in a bit of detail. And then inshallah ta'ala we're going to end the lecture here. How do you use the blessing in good? There's an ayah in the Quran that truly shocked me. Allah said, I'amalu ala Dawood. I'amalu ala Dawood shukran. Allah said, Allah, you know Dawood alayhi salam, Allah gave him a lot of blessings. He made him a king. And then his family, his children, he made them, he made his son, Suleiman, a king. And he gave the family of Dawood things that were great. So he gave them a lot of, gave them a lot of what? Blessings, right? Okay, good. He gave them a lot of what? Blessings. So what did Allah say to them in response to the blessings? Allah said, I'malu. Allah said, do shukar. He said, do gratitude. He didn't say, say shukar. Some of us think it's enough to say, thank you Allah. And then you carry on about your day. Nah, akhi. It's not enough to say, thank you Allah. You have to do. Do something. Your actions are gratitude. So then when you prayed your salah, did you do something? Did you do something? You were just grateful. When you gave charity, did you do something? You were just grateful. When you read the Quran, we, did you just do something? You were just grateful. So the more worship you do, 
the more actions you do, the more you are being grateful. Does that make sense? Okay, now a smart person here is going to ask a very intelligent question. He's going to say, okay, which actions show the most gratitude? Is that another question that will come to your mind? If my actions are going to bring me gratitude, then which actions are going to bring me, are going to be the most grateful actions? Because if the action is very grateful, then the return is what? They're going to be increased more. Right? Do you guys want me to tell you? I swear by Allah, if I tell you this, and we do this, it's going to change our life. I repeat, I swear by Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth, if you do these two actions that I'm going to tell you, it's going to change your life. But I'm only going to tell you if you promise You promise that you're going to really try and do it What do you guys think? You guys are going to promise? Even you? You guys are? Yeah? What are you? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us the best fasting was the fasting of Dawood And the best salah was the salah of Dawood Remember Dawood is the one Allah told to be grateful, right? And he's the one that Allah told him Do actions of gratitude, right? And the Prophet is telling you what those actions Dawood done And the Prophet is saying These were the best and most beloved to Allah He used to fast one day And then he would not fast the second day then he would fast the next day and he would not fast the day after. So he would fast one day on one day off. In terms, and by the way, this is not talking about the fasting of Ramadan. That you have to do, of course. <laughs> yes? Then the second thing Dawood would do is that he would pray one third of the night. It's not talking about five daily prayers you're already doing. That's, that's, that, that's everyone. Does that make sense? But on top, you have to pray one third of the night. What does that mean one third of the night? Night time starts for us at Maghrib and it ends at Fajr. Night starts when? Maghrib and it ends where? Fajr. So let's just say for argument's sake, Maghrib is at 9 p.m. Just so we can, I'm going to teach you how to work it out. For argument's sake, let's say Maghrib starts at 9 p.m. And let's say Fajr is at 6 a.m. How many hours is that? Nine hours. That's nine hours, right? Okay, so what's one third of nine? So in three hours is one third of the night. Do you understand? If the night time is 12 hours, then what's one third of 12? Four. So you look at the time between Maghrib and what? Fajr. So then the best prayer at night is when you do one third of the night. You sleep the rest, but you pray one third. And the best fasting is one day on, one day off. Brothers, if you do this, you have shown Allah gratitude. Okay, but some of you are saying, Ak, one third of the night is a bit hard. No problem. I'll give you a hack to get there. I'll give you a hack to what? Get there. When is the night very short in the UK? In the summer. That was a shocking response. <laughs> and you all said it. <laughs> That was mad. <laughs> we all live in the same country, huh? <laughs> and all of you said it. <laughs> I didn't hear one person say it around. That was mad. You don't go to school, right? Well, some of you don't need to go back to your GCSEs, man. They need to bring the sats back. I heard they took the sats away. Is that true? You don't even know. See, sats was an exam they used to do. Yeah, six, year nine, just to make sure you're right. <laughs> the summertime, the night is the shortest. Sometimes the night is less than six hours in the summer. Right? Sometimes Maghrib is at 10 p.m. and Fajr is at 2.30. How many hours is that? Four hours. Four hours. So what's, what, what's, what's three divided by four? It's like an hour and a half. It's like an hour and a half. So if in the summertime, you start praying one third of the night, and you do it every night, guess what? Every day when the night gets longer, towards the winter, it's going up by a minute or two every night. 
going from an hour and a half to an hour and 31 minutes, hour, 32 minutes, it's very easy just adding on an extra minute every day. Going from an hour to three hours is a bit hard. Going from an hour to four hours is a bit hard. But going from an hour, just one extra minute every day, that's very, that's very easy. So use the summertime. But some of you are like, but even praying an hour and a half is hard for me, no problem. So now you start praying even if it's just 10 minutes. From now on you start praying even if it's just 10 minutes at night. You will wake up for Fajr, right? Wake up 10 minutes before what? Fajr kicks in, even if you just pray one, one, one rakah, you pray the night prayer. Even if you prayed it before you went to sleep, it's still a night prayer. After Isha, if you prayed even one witter just before you went to sleep, you prayed the night prayer. But then the next day, you make it two. So you just, every day, you just increase, increase, you just slowly increase a little bit. Until you get to the summer, you could do an hour and a half. And then from that point onwards, you stick to the one third of the night, you don't go back. Okay, as for the fasting, one day on, one day off, the best time to train yourself is when? The winter. Could have fasted so short. I can gonna fast from 6.30 to 5. That's easy. One day on, one day off. You can start that from tomorrow. Who's gonna start that from tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala? Who's gonna start fasting? One day, one day off from tomorrow. Well, we can all do that. And if that's very hard for you, at least do Mondays and? That's at least. At least, right? So there's a minimum. Mondays and Thursdays. For the fasting and even just praying one, one witter, one rakah at night, even one. You got the night prayer. And then you work to increase it. But if you start it, never let go of it now. If you start Mondays and Thursdays, there's never a Monday, Thursday you're gonna listen now, inshallah. If you start praying, even if it's one rakah at night, you're never gonna let go of that. But the next day you're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna pray more. Maybe I'm gonna make it a bit longer now. You're gonna maybe make it longer by a minute. Until you can get to one day on one day up And until you can get to pray one third of the night Prophet is not hard Uthman radiallahu ta'ala Who used to pray the whole Read the whole Quran in one rakah in salah at night The whole Quran in one rakah It takes six and a half hours for a person Who's memorized the Quran strong To read it beginning to end Without stopping it takes six hours So one rakah would pray six hours of the night Are you guys shocked? People do that today. You know, you guys are Ustad Abdul Rahman? In Ramadan, he finishes the Quran, reading it once every day. He prays Salat al Fajr and then he reads the Quran until the sun rises and after. I remember we went to visit him in Sharjah once and he told us that I finished the Quran every day for the last 16 days. Today's the 17th. The only day I didn't finish it is because you lot came to visit me, you distracted me. So people are doing this today. People are alive doing this now. It's not just back in the days. So we can do it. Does that make sense? Brothers, if you get your night prayer sorted and you get your fasting sorted, brothers, you are saying, Allah, I'm grateful. Now Allah is going to be giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. And you're always going to be a state of increase until he gives you al-jannah. What do you guys think? Is that good? But this is implying that you're already praying the five daily prayers, yes? You're already praying the five daily prayers. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk. If you'd like to get more information about when the next event is going to be, the location, time, place, date, click the link below and join the Telegram group that will take you to a group where we have all the information about all of our live events. Wanted to give those of you who are not able to make it an opportunity to participate in the khair and that is that inshallah ta'ala if you would like to contribute towards the expenses of these events we don't charge anyone to attend but we do have a lot of expenses food whatnot the giveaways that attract the people to come in and whatever have you as you can see it brings in the youth the youngsters the ones who you know we really need to reach out to them and get them in the masjid who knows someone may come to the masjid completely change their life and of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the primary reason for that but then Allah Azza wa might have made you a means for that person or those people to change so donate as generously as you can at the link below and inshallah ta'ala please come and attend so hopefully we see you there inshallah ta'ala assalamu alaikum peace